today, President Biden getting ready to address Congress. He's expected to announce a new multi-trillion dollar package. What's in it, and how does he plan to pay for it? Boeing posts another quarterly loss, although it's smaller than before. But now the company faces another problem. And big news for blockchain: a major bank is going to issue bonds on Ethereum for the first time. That and much more coming up at NGD Business. Good evening. Great to have you with us. President Biden unveils a sweeping $1.8 trillion package for families and education. He'll give his first joint speech to Congress tonight. The White House called Biden's American Families Plan a once-in-a-generation investment, and says it would bring lasting benefits to the economy, expand the middle class, and reduce child poverty. The plan includes one trillion in spending on education and childcare, and 800 billion dollars in tax credits aimed at middle and low-income families. To pay for the plan, Biden wants to raise taxes on the incomes of the wealthiest Americans and double the tax rates on investment income or capital gains for those earning more than one million dollars a year. The family's plan faces a difficult path in Congress, though many Republicans oppose additional large spending measures and are also against proposed tax increases. Wall Street ended lower today after the Federal Reserve held interest rates steady. The Dow falling 165 points, nearly half percent. S&P 500 lost four points, so that's less than one tenth of percent. The Nasdaq dropped 39 points, but 0.28 percent. Facebook reporting earnings after market easily beating expectations. Investors were also awaiting Apple's results. Ten-year Treasury yield pulled back from earlier gains today, was holding at about 1.62 percent. Boeing, though, posts another quarterly loss today, six in a row. Although the loss is smaller than before, the company also confirmed it's halting deliveries of its cash cow, the 737 Max jet, because of electrical problems. CEO says he doesn't know when the issue will be resolved. Conway G. Gittins reports. Boeing on Wednesday posted a first quarter core operating loss of $353 million, compared to the $1.7 billion it lost the same time last year. Total revenues dropped 10%. Boeing has delivered more than 85 of the 737 Max jets since it was put back into service late last year, after two deadly plane crashes grounded it for nearly two years. But many struggles still abound. An electrical problem has marred the return of the financially important 737 Max. Some airlines recently had to pull dozens of the jets from service as they await repairs from Boeing. And the plane still has not been given the green light to resume flying in the lucrative. Chinese market. In addition, Boeing hasn't been able to deliver on a new fleet of Air Force One presidential aircraft due to conflict with a supplier, forcing it to take a financial hit last quarter. And even though global demand for air travel is on the mend, the rebound is mainly for short-haul domestic flights, which means airlines are buying smaller jets, not larger ones. Boeing has had to sharply reduce production on its long-haul 787 aircraft to save cash. And the Federal Communications Commission is allowing SpaceX to deploy some Starlink satellites at lower Earth orbit than planned, but there are a number of conditions to help ensure safety. It asks for the approval to fly, fly almost 3,000 satellites at a lower orbit as part of the plan to provide high-speed broadband internet services to people who lack access. SpaceX told the agency that the change in altitude would improve space safety, reduce interference, and improve customer experience. In addition to the safety measures, the FCC said SpaceX agreed to accept that the lower altitude satellites could encounter interference from satellites deployed under Amazon's satellite project. A newly released court document show a top Facebook executive saying the company should prepare for the worst. Silver claims the tech giant inflated its advertising audience. Anthony Patrick Hayden reports. Newly disclosed court documents show Facebook ad chief Caroline Everson saying that the company needs to prepare for the worst. That's upon discovering Facebook's advertising reach figure is artificially inflated. A small business owner filed the class action lawsuit in California in 2018. It says Facebook is protecting its bottom line as it knew about the problem but didn't do anything. One media exec that services smaller businesses says it's good to have a David for the Goliath of Facebook.
you have to have transparency. You have to have a sense of integrity when you, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, social media, especially with Facebook. So I think it is a big deal. And I think if, if uh, this small business can be the catapult, uh, you know, letting them, there's a voice for us, then, um, you know, then that's a win for us. Facebook says the highlighted emails are cherry picking. It says potential reach is just an indicator and not something the customer is billed on. But the ad chief's email showed there was concern. She said we are going to get really criticized for that and justifiably so. The lawsuit says that Facebook's potential ad reach for various states was more than the actual population in those areas. Patrick Hayden, NTD News. And Google's parent company Alphabet seeing record profits again last quarter. Indeed, Con Fredrickson explains how. Record profits for Google parent Alphabet, the global conglomerate hit another record for a second consecutive quarter, riding a surge of ad spending and internet use. People have turned to Google search more than ever since the pandemic began. Searches for businesses went up 80% versus last year. In terms of retail, Google made product listings free, removed commission fees, and opened its shopping platform to Shopify and PayPal. We're also helping retailers lean into some key opportunities, such as innovating in omnichannel as the line between digital and physical retail continues to blur. Something else Google is working on, more features for Google Maps. We'll be adding over 100 AI-powered improvements this year, such as indoor live view, which helps you navigate airports, transit stations, and malls using augmented reality. On the downside, Google's share of America's search advertising market is slipping falling from 61% a year earlier to 57%, while Amazon's share grows from 13% to 19% over the same period. Currently, 92% of the world's internet users use Google Search, 89% use Google Maps, and 73% use YouTube. Colin Fredrickson, NTD News. And the European Union's investment bank, called the European Investment Bank, is apparently about to do its first bond issuance on blockchain. 100 million euros, about $120 million, will be priced on the Ethereum blockchain. It won't be denominated in crypto, it'll be denominated in euro, but it's still a pretty big milestone. Usually a custodian bank like Bank of New York Mellon will keep a record of who's buying and selling bonds, but they don't work for free, of course. Issuing it on the blockchain in theory could eliminate those middlemen, but maybe not right away. Blockchain is like a decentralized public ledger that can be used to keep a record of transactions without that central authority like BNY Mellon. Kent Barton, the head of research and development at the crypto exchange Shapeshift, tells me that the two main advantages of this are efficiency, you can cut out back office tasks, and reduce risk. Nobody can change the records once they've been recorded. So, big milestone, I asked him where things might go next. This news about uh, European banks issuing bonds on Ethereum is, um, is yet another milestone kind of showing more, um, more adoption is happening. Um, if you look ahead, I think one thing we'll see is th this is just the start of what will be a tsunami of, of assets being put on the blockchain for, for those, those reasons I mentioned. It's just it's a more efficient process and it limits risk. Um, no longer are things happening in a sort of the, you know, the proverbial smoke filled room. This is where uh, everything is out in the open, um, and uh, that's going to be powerful. So in, in the future, the not too distant future, I think we'll see uh, you know, everything from, from all sorts of different types of bonds to equities to, uh, to real estate on the blockchain. Um, and then where it gets quite interesting is you know, when you think about the end user, uh, the retail investor, or just anybody around the planet, not, not part of institutions. There's also a lot of interesting things happening at, at that level. And, and that's where we kind of get into the, the decentralized finance side of things. Um, so you and your viewers have probably heard of, of this. Uh, you know, it's called DeFi. But essentially what this is, is uh, financial architecture that, that, it, that is built on blockchains that inherits all these wonderful properties, uh, censorship resistance, transparency, um, credible neutrality, meaning no, no, no single party like a nation state or a group of corporations or group of individuals can influence what's happening because this network is so distributed or decentralized. So um, what we've seen over the past two years is the rise of, of decentralized finance where anybody across the planet, hypothetically, can, um, 
can use this this technology to uh, to trade crypto assets, um, to uh, to lend and borrow. Uh, there's interesting things happening on the derivative side of things. So you know they're they're completely kind of skipping the, the bankers in this sense and just doing it um, in, in a more direct direct way because again this, this permissionless is or this technology is permissionless. Uh, for example, anybody can upload a smart contract that you know maybe facilitates some sort of lending arrangement or a bond arrangement on on Ethereum. No, nobody can stop that, and that's powerful. Right? There's no more gatekeepers in that context. I've heard some people complain that the transaction costs on Ethereum can sometimes be quite expensive. How will that impact something like this bond issuance that we're looking at at the moment? Right. So th this has sort of been. A, a, a challenge and, and a, predict, a predictable one, but a, a, a challenge specifically with Ethereum is, um, you know, there's a limited amount of size uh, or, or space to include all these transactions in, in the blockchain. Um, you can get a transaction in there, but you might have to pay a lot. So um, for, for institutional players, um, higher, uh, and we, we call them gas prices, it's the, the cost of using uh, or transacting with the Ethereum network. Uh, institutions, you know, if, if you're dealing with, you know, a hundred million dollar bond, it's not such a big deal. Um, I, I don't see that as being a, a, a problem. However, it's very much an issue when you talk about uh, retail users and, and really anybody that wants to um, interact with it. You know, if you have ten thousand dollars in your portfolio, you know, spending five hundred dollars on gas over a few months is, is not great. So um, what, what's happening here, though, is in what I think one of the most exciting developments uh, in this space is is the scalability uh, of this. Uh, so platforms are being put into place right now and even starting to roll out into production that that facilitate um, cheaper transactions, all while inheriting those same qualities that we've come to expect with with blockchains and with Ethereum, uh, you know, the, the credible neutrality, censorship resistance. Very interesting. Kent Barton, Shapeshift, thank you. Hey, pleasure talking, Paul. Thank you. And food delivery company DoorDash is launching lower price delivery options for U.S. restaurants. Critics say it charges restaurants too much, and that's hurting the industry. DoorDash says it will offer a new basic plan that will charge restaurants 15% per order. That's around half the cost of previous plans. In order to tap into the lower price plan, restaurants face a limit on the delivery area. Some delivery costs will also be shifted to consumers. DoorDash said local restaurants and chains with fewer than 75 locations are eligible for the new rates, but the company wouldn't say how many of its partner restaurants meet that criteria. An insurance company, Humana, is jumping deeper into the home care services and buying home care provider Kindred at Home for nearly $6 billion. It's not stopping there. Anthony's Evelyn Lee reports. Insurance company Humana is spending $5.7 billion to jump deeper into home care service. It's buying the rest of Kindred at Home after acquiring a 40% stake in it a few years ago. The company sends nurses and other care providers to homebound patients. It's seen a jump in demand since the pandemic started. The pandemic has reinforced patients' increasing desire for convenient and personalized delivery channels requiring innovative home care offerings. The acquisition of Kindred at Home will provide us with an extensive network of nurses, a critical distribution channel for delivering care in the home. The goal is to keep people out of expensive hospitals or prevent return visits. It can also help fix other issues. Kindred's nurses, for instance, can determine on a home visit whether a patient has enough healthy food or not. Fully integrating at home, Kindred at Home will enable us to, to more closely align incentives to focus on improving patient outcomes and on reducing the total cost of care. Health insurers are moving deeper into the business of taking care of patients. Humana's rival, Cigna Corporation, for example, purchased telehealth provider MD Live this year. And United Health Group has assembled one of the country's largest collections of doctors. One expert who studies healthcare cost and quality says, like telemedicine, it seems like one of those things that can be a win-win for patients and insurers. But she noted that there are limits to how much care can be performed at home before quality suffers. Humana expects the Kindred deal to close in the third quarter. Evelyn Lee, NTD News. And JP Morgan Chase is telling workers to get ready to come back to the office. 
The bank told staff it's planning to bring all workers back starting in July. Not everyone will be back at the office at the same time, though. Instead, it'll be on a rotating basis and maintain 50% occupancy. Getting a vaccine is not required, but the bank told employees that they're strongly encouraged to do so. Other Wall Street banks aren't far behind. Goldman Sachs CEO telling employees he hopes to bring workers back by this summer. He himself has been working from the company's New York headquarters throughout most of the health crisis. Wells Fargo also planning to start bringing workers back to the office after Labor Day. And Walmart is trying to block Kanye West's proposed new logo. The retailers filed a complaint with the Patent and Trademark Office saying the design looks too much like the logo it's been using since 2007. Walmart's logo uses six straight lines coming from a center circle to resemble the rays of the sun. West's proposed new logo, you can see it on the left, for his Yeezy brand is a similar pattern but the lines are made up of a series of dots. And there are eight of them. Walmart says the West's design is, quote, likely to cause confusion and lead to consumer deception. The rapper's Yeezy brand brought him close to $200 million last year for sneakers it sold in partnership with Adidas and wants to use the new logo for a variety of products including sneakers, underwear, furniture and modular homes. And the family of the late Samsung chairman says they'll pay nearly $11 billion in inheritance tax for his estate. They're also donating his private art collection to state curators. MTD's Colin Fredrickson reports. He was the man credited with transforming Samsung into the world's largest smartphone and memory chip maker. And now the family of Lee Kun Hee is giving back, saying on Wednesday that they will pay more than $10.8 billion in inheritance taxes. They will also donate his vast private art collection to state curators. Lee died on October 25th, leaving an estate valued at around $23 billion. Now the hefty inheritance tax bill is one of the largest ever globally. The family plans to pay the tax over a period of five years in six installments, starting this month. The move has been closely watched amid talk of a big donation to make reparations for Lee's conviction on tax evasion and embezzlement charges over a decade ago. Much of Lee's extensive personal art collection, including masterpieces by Picasso and Monet, will be donated to organizations, including the National Museum of Korea. Shares in holding company Samsung C&T fell after the news. Investors worried over a lack of detail on how the payments would be funded or what would happen to Li's shares. And Chinese telecom giant Huawei says its revenue dropped over 16% last quarter from a year ago. The company chairman says it'll be a challenging year in 2021. Former President Trump blacklisted Huawei, blocking it from accessing U.S. technology. Its smartphone business, which was once lucrative, then was under pressure. Huawei later sold its budget mobile phone unit. In 2022, profits were largely driven by its home market, China. Business elsewhere declined, with revenues down across all major markets. The chairman says Huawei is now investing in businesses less reliant on U.S. chip technology like autonomous driving and cloud computing. And hostile regimes will now have to think twice before messing with Texas. A bill just passed the state Senate with flying colors that bans them from the state's critical infrastructure. One of the bill's main authors explains why it's so important. And today's Allison Lee has the details. It prohibits countries that are hostile to our nation, specifically China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea, from tying into our critical infrastructure. Texas State Senator Donna Campbell gives the example of a proposed wind farm project near an Air Force base in the southern border. The Chinese owner behind this investment is a former officer from the Chinese regime's military. His company bought 130,000 acres of land in western Texas beginning in 2015. What is a Chinese citizen who's a billionaire, what is his interest whenever he's a high-ranking member of the Communist, the Chinese Communist Party, what's his interest in this project? The investment drew scrutiny last year, with many experts believing it poses a national security threat. This is because the Chinese company might be able to collect intelligence from the military base, and the wind farm will be connected to the Texas electric grid. Texas State Representative Tan Parker highlights Texas's strategic importance to the nation. Texas is home 
to 15 military installations and over 227,000 uniformed and Department of Defense civilian personnel. The new bill will prohibit businesses from signing any contracts with Chinese, Russian, Iranian, and North Korean-based companies or companies owned by citizens of the four countries in relation to infrastructure. It has now moved to the Texas State House. Allison Lee, NTD News. And Taiwan is taking action to protect its technology. Its government says the Chinese regime is waging economic warfare against the island's tech sector. Now lawmakers are considering stronger legislation to prevent it. In today's Jasmina Davis is the story. Taiwan is considering stronger laws to stop China from stealing its technology and poaching its talent. Taiwan is home to a world-leading semiconductor industry, and the government has long worried about China's efforts to copy that success, including by industrial espionage and other underhanded methods. Our deputy national security advisor knows this, what's called reverse engineering, that Chinese companies will reverse engineer a lot of our products with intellectual property rights protection. In March, Taiwan said a Chinese tech company called Bitmain poached several hundred of Taiwan's research staff by setting up research centers on the island. Authorities searched the homes of 19 executives and engineers who may have been involved. Taiwan's National Security Bureau says China accounts for 48 of 51 cases of industrial espionage by foreign forces since 2013, but only two were eventually investigated and prosecuted. Now lawmakers are trying to amend the commercial secrets law to provide stronger protection. If we want to achieve the deterrent effect, we need to increase the punishment for the crime. One lawmaker says it's urgent. She said the infiltration of China's red supply chain is everywhere. It's not clear when or if the amendments could be passed into law. One national security official expressed broad backing for the measure. China's Taiwan Affairs Office did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Jasmina Davis, NTD News. Still to come this evening. Are you planning to hit the road this summer? You might see a gas shortage when you try to fill up. What's the cause? And be prepared to pay more if you're planning to buy a new car. Dealers don't have enough cars to sell and prices are rising. Find out more after this short break. It's just clear as day. The media, whether it's broadcast, cable, or print media, has become extremely biased. And I started looking online for alternative ways to, to get information. And I saw an ad for a free trial. And I looked at it and I said, Epoch Times? I mean, come on, this is end of days type of stuff? I mean, what are they gonna be talking about here? And I said, well, it's a free trial, let me dig in. Is it giving me both sides? Is it giving me an objective point of view here? I have looked for opportunities to see where they might be biased, and I don't find it. It has given me a level of trust in media that I didn't think I'd ever get back. I love the Epic Times because it has renewed uh, my faith in the idea that a reliable, responsible, non-biased source of information is available. And I can say that I love it because of that.
gas stations might be running out of gas this summer. Not because of a looming shortage of crude oil or gasoline. It's actually because of a driver shortage for tanker trucks. The trade group says up to 25% of tank trucks are parked heading into the summer because there aren't enough qualified drivers. At this point in 2019, only 10% of trucks were sitting idle. Many drivers left the business a year ago when gas demand came to a near halt because of pandemic-related shutdowns. Also, many driver schools closed early in the pandemic. Tanker truckers require special certification and training in order to deliver gas. But if you're in the market for a car this year, get ready to pay more. That's because car dealerships are facing shortages and consumers are now paying the price. Mandy Geither has a closer look at what's behind the sticker prices. A price boom for cars. Car lots across the country are dealing with limited inventories, and that's forcing many consumers to pay more for those high-demand cars. Car dealerships are reporting they only have a fraction of the vehicles they typically have, both new and used, and that limited supply is sending prices to record levels. In the first quarter of the year, the average new car price was $37,200, and according to industry analysts at J. Power, that's up 8.4 percent from the same period a year ago. J.D. Power says wholesale prices for used cars sold at auction are up 26 percent since the start of this year. It's a dramatic shift from a year ago when many car dealerships were forced to close due to the pandemic and a shift to working from home caused a 30 percent drop in car sales. Now sales are booming. Last month, the seasonally adjusted sales rate for new cars hit the highest level since October 2017. But that demand is coming at a difficult time. A computer chip shortage is shutting down production at auto plants around the world. According to Cox Automotive, new car production in North America is down about 3.4 million vehicles in the first three months of 2021. Limited supply and strong sales all causing those historic prices. I'm Mandy Gaither. The computer shortage is only one factor squeezing the inventory of available vehicles. Experts say other auto parts, including tires and resins, are also starting to be in short supply. And that's the latest business updates for today. You can still catch NTD Evening News with Stephanie Cox. That's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. For NTD Business, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We have a new channel. Subscribe to us on YouTube at NTD News. Get the highlights of our news broadcast and the most important headlines that we curate especially for you. Don't miss out on important news. Our videos are being deleted. So if you don't want to be cut off from honest news, take a moment to sign up for our newsletter at newsletter.ntd.com so you don't lose access to NTD. Go to newsletter.ntd.com to sign up for our evening newsletter.